Okay, this is part one of a two-part video on the triangle mid-segment theorem. And in it, we're going to prove one of the first propositions uh, of the triangle mid-segment theorem, that line segment MN is always going to be parallel to line segment AC if M and N are midpoints of their respective sides of the triangle. So what I've highlighted here are the connections between the generic locations of the vertices, so AH for A, BK for B, and CL for C, and how those are going to fit into the midpoint formula and later on the slope formula. Because in order to show that uh, line segment MN is parallel to line segment AC, we have to show that they have the same slope. So before we can use the slope formula, we need to have a location for point M and point N. And we're going to get that through the midpoint formula. So I'm going to turn this way low so it's just barely visible. And maybe a little bit more than that. I put 20% maybe. OK. And uh, the midpoint will be x1 plus x2. But here, my x1 my x1 and x2 are a and b. So that'll be for the location of m, a plus b over 2. And uh, for the y coordinate of m, that'll be k plus h over 2. And then the location of point m follows a similar logic. The x coordinates are b and c. So for the midpoint, x coordinate, that's a plus b, uh, I'm sorry, that's b plus c over 2. And then for the y part of the midpoint, uh, the location of point n, uh, that is going to be k plus l. So, uh, okay, it was b plus c over 2 and k plus L over 2. Uh, and so now what we're going to do is plug points. Uh, we're going to find the slope between points M and point N. So that means we're going to apply this slope formula here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that down uh, the rest of the way. Uh, take notice now that this here is our Y value for point N, and this is our Y value for point m and then this is our x value for point n and this is our x value for point n so we're going to have a rather unfriendly looking fraction uh, as we go through this but it's going to simplify down nicely so we've got y2 oops, let's make that look like an l minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the complex nature of the fraction. You see how each of those expressions is being divided by 2. k plus l over 2, k plus h over 2, a plus b over 2, b plus c over 2. All of those are being divided by 2. So that means we can factor out 1 half and cancel it away. So the numerator is the same as 1 half times k plus l minus the quantity k plus h divided by the denominator where we factor out the one half as well and that will be one half times b plus c minus the quantity a plus b. Uh, we have to keep this thing the quantity because this minus sign is acting on both of the um, characters in the numerator. Okay, so now uh, remember, this is an L. I know my handwriting doesn't always make that easy. Cancel out the one half, and that leaves us with K plus L minus the quantity K plus H over B plus C minus the quantity A plus B. Distribute that negative, and we get K plus L minus K minus H over b plus c minus a minus b. 
Uh, and then we can cancel off like terms. Positive K and negative K cancel. Positive B and negative B cancel, leaving L minus H over C minus B. So while it took considerable doing, we have got the slope of line segment MN. Uh, so we'll go ahead and state that slope of line segment MN. And can we show that L minus H over C minus B is equal to the slope of A uh, C on the bottom? So let's just uh, drop this away for a moment and bring this back up. And let's have a look. Uh, we've shown here that the slope of MN is L minus uh, H over C minus A. And look what happens if we apply the slope formula to this line segment down here. Y2 minus Y1 would be L1 min uh, would be L minus H. So that's L minus H. X2 minus X1 would be C minus A. So the slope of AC is equal to LH, L minus H over C minus A, and the slope of MN is equal to the same thing. So from that, we can conclude that the slopes of those two lines will always be the same, and that those two line segments then, the triangle mid-segment and the, the opposing or the third side of the triangle will always be parallel.